Today, we're going to be talking about the mysterious and black art of dithering. I'm really going to give you a deep understanding of what it does and why, and we'll try to answer the time-long question, to dither or not to dither. Dithering is all about getting rid of quantization noise. If you're asking yourself, what is quantization noise, fear not, you've come to the right place. I'll talk about quantization noise in part one, and then about dithering, which solves it in part two. We start out with the observation that not all noises are born equal. It's a lot easier to fall asleep to, say, the sound of an airplane's motor than it is to your neighbors playing, say, some insane new dubstep song, even if both are at the same volume. This has to do with psychoacoustics. The more random noise is, the less obtrusive it becomes. Here's an example. On the top, you see a waveform of random noise, which is often called white noise. On the bottom, you see non-random noise. Let's listen to both. First, the white noise. Then, the non-random noise. The non-random noise sounds quite a bit more jarring than the white noise. It even has some frequency components that give it a pitch. Now let's switch to quantization. If you haven't watched my video about what bit depth and quantization mean, watch it now, because we're going to make use of those concepts next. Here is a sine wave at a frequency of 480 Hz. This is what it sounds like. This particular waveform was generated at 24 bits, which means it has a very fine resolution. Now we're going to resample it at 3 bits. This means that the resulting waveform will only have 8 levels of detail. Remember, 3 bits means 2 to the 3, that is 8 levels. We're going to divide our vertical line into 8 different values and round each point of the waveform to the nearest line. The resulting waveform will look like a series of steps that, well, kind of look like a sine wave. A steppy sine wave, but still a sine wave. Here's what it sounds like. You can hear the original sine wave in there, but there are some additional artifacts because of the quantization. These artifacts are called quantization noise. Let's subtract the quantized waveform from the original waveform. Looks familiar? Yep, it's the same non-white noise we've looked at just a bit earlier. I was being sneaky, not telling you where it came from. This noise is called quantization noise because it's the error that's introduced when we reduce the bit depth of our input signal. Let's listen to just the quantization noise. The quantization noise is obtained by subtracting the quantized signal from the original signal. This is equivalent to saying that the quantized 3-bit signal can be thought of as the original high-resolution 24-bit signal minus or plus a quantization noise term. Let's sum up by listening to the different parts. I'd just like to mention that the same effect is observed in image editing. Wikipedia has a nice portrayal of this. Here's an image of a cat with high bit depth, having a rich color palette. When it is downsampled to just 8 bits, meaning 256 different colors, a very distinct striped pattern appears. This pattern should be thought of as quantization noise. One final insight about quantization noise. The finer the quantization, the smaller the quantization noise. This is because quantization is a process of rounding up or down to the nearest value. The more bits your signal has, the finer these values are, and the smaller the error becomes. Here you can see the quantization error for the sine wave as it is downsampled to 2, 3, and 4 bits. Note how the quantization noise becomes smaller the more bits we use. Also, 
note that it never exceeds the smallest level of detail afforded by the quantization. In signal processing or audio slang, we would say that the quantization noise is confined to the least significant bit. Think of it as follows. If you had to round the number 78 up and had a resolution of hundreds, you would round it up to 100, introducing an error of 22. But if your resolution was finer, say in the tens, you would round it up to 80, introducing a much smaller error of 2. Now, we've already remarked that the white random noise is good, and the quantization noise, which is not random, is bad. Can we somehow make the quantization noise whiter and more random? The answer is a resounding yes. This is precisely what dithering does. How this is achieved will be discussed in part 2.